What's going on guys? Tyson Trainer here, back with another podcast, uh, or sorry, sports talk, um, lecture topic, and not really lecture, but today I want to talk to you guys about um, weight cutting for sports, you know, because a lot of sports do have weight classes, a majority of sports do have weight classes, and uh, you know, based on the sport, you can actually, a lot of people, you know, have you've probably heard of water cutting before, or you know, there, there's just like, we need to make weights, obviously, for the class that we're trying to compete in. And there are very many different ways to do it, and there are very many sports that kind of do different methods, you know? But one of the most common things that people do is water cut for a weight class, you know? So what they'll do is they might be four kilos or six kilos over a weight class. They've got a week to be able to water cut. So what they start to do is they start to drink high amount of water. So usually it'll be like four or five liters a day, six liters a day, probably more. And you're drinking all this water, and what that's doing is it's, um. So basically you've got a hormone that's gonna help balance out your water. So what that's gonna do is you're gonna be drinking more water, the hormone's gonna to start to kick in, you're gonna start, then it's gonna make the kidneys start trying to flush out more water. So then you're gonna keep pissing and pissing and pissing and pissing, trying to get all that water out. And then I think it's like two days before you basically cut all your water intake. So you don't really drink anything. Like on that last day, you're not gonna fucking drink anything. And even the day before, it'll be like 500 mils, 250 mils max a day. And it's a very like strict thing. And then you'll drop a bunch of water weight, be able to make your weight class, after you weigh in, you'll be able to eat and then be able to you know, fight at a higher weight class, wherever it's gonna be. And that does have practical applications in the fighting side of things, you know? So if you are an MMA fighter, you're gonna have your weight to be able to use it like with you or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or anything like that. So a lot of these fighters will water cut before the event to be able to make their weight class, then eat higher, then be able to go and compete at a higher weight and use your weight as an advantage. So sometimes that does have advantages for weight classes like that, where you can manipulate your body weight to, I guess, like, you know, out, outweigh your opponent at the end of the day. So again, fighting sports, MMA, as in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, what am I trying to think of? Wrestling, things like that. They're all gonna be basically for that. I don't even know if wrestling has a weight class. I'm just thinking more of the MMA, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu sport, and I can't think of all the other <laughs> type of uh, martial arts that come off the top of my head. So with that though, there are also times we don't wanna weight cut. And one of the things we really don't want to weight cut for is any weightlifting sport. So especially Olympic lifting and powerlifting, okay? Because what people try and do, they always think, you think mass moves mass, right? The heavier you are, the more weight you can lift. And that is true to a degree, but it's not so much true because strength isn't just about the amount of muscle mass you have or about how much you weigh. It does play a factor. But that's not the only thing, you know? You've also got a variable, or just, you know, I guess what kind of happens is strength is produced neurologically, you know, neurologically, I need to say that word right. So basically what happens is the signals from your brain are firing to your muscles. You become more efficient at that the more you do it. And that's why you can be the same weight and you get stronger without gaining any weight or any muscle mass, you know? It's not, you don't gain more muscle and you get stronger. I've got a large majority of muscle mass for me and I'm quite lean. But there are guys who are lighter than me or also heavier than me and have less muscle mass and they can move more weight. But especially the lighter guys can move more weight than me. But I'm bigger than them and I've got more muscle. So what does that mean? Well, it's neurological, right? So with saying that, when it comes to a weight class sport, you wanna stay as close to your weight as you can and then like, you know, cut back a little bit. So maybe if you're competing in the 92 kilo class, you wanna be at like 93 kilos, cause you can reduce, you can take a big shit and you can be 92 kilos, easy as peasy, you know? Or you eat a little bit less two days beforehand and then you're 92 kilos. Because what happens is if you're so far up and then you water cut for something like a power if you're an Olympic lifting event, you are gonna be getting cramps because your electrolyte balance is gonna be all out of fucking whack. You are not gonna be able to produce as actually much force as you can because you've done so much depletion in this time. You're gonna be hungry, you're gonna be lightheaded, you're gonna be dizzy. Even if you eat after the weigh-in, you're not gonna be able to re restore your glycogen amount or to be able to you know, just get yourself in the right headspace. Not everyone, some people can, with a water cut. And that's why it's specific for a certain sport. You know, I would never recommend someone who's a power lifter or an Olympic lifter ever to weight cut and a uh, water cut, sorry. And what I would suggest is you stay close, as close to your weight class as you can, and you hone in technique. Because the more you practice the bench, the more you practice the deadlift, the more you practice the squat, the more you practice your ollie lifting. So, you know, your clean and jerk. Um, sorry, I can't even remember the two names of my head, top of my head. I'm having a mind blank this morning. What I'm saying here, oh yes, obviously the clean and jerk and the snatch, sorry. I don't know why that didn't uh, go with my head. So the clean and snatch, the, 
the snatch, the clean and jerk, the squat, the bench, the deadlift. You keep practicing those movements, you will get better at the same weight, you will get stronger, you know? And with the clean and jerk and uh, the snatch, they are like very, very, very complicated movements. You know, they're not fucking easy to do. A deadlift, a little bit easier, you know? Um, a bench press, quite easy. And a squat, probably a little bit harder. But the more you ingrain the technique, the better you become at it, the more efficient you become at it, the more your muscle, like the more your neurons fire, the easier it becomes like to be able to fire properly, the, the more it becomes ingrained as a second habit, the better you get at that skill, the stronger you're gonna get because it's about efficiency, you know? It's the same thing as running. When you run, first it's gonna be your cardiovascular system, it's probably gonna cut you down. Or like, you know, like there's only gonna be so much you can do with running. But as you get fitter, you become more efficient. Your strides, you know, become uh, longer. Your time, your contact time on the ground becomes less. Uh, you just become more efficient as a runner overall. Cause you know, you might start when you're running, you're lent over, like first time you run, you're <sighs> breathing. And then as you get better, you know, your gait is better. You've got a better arm swing. You've got uh, just better biometrics overall, sorry, biomechanics. And so the thing we want to think about here is like, with these things that you can become neurologically better at and improve strength tremendously without having to change weight that much, it's better to be closer to your weight class because then you're not risking any potential negative side effects, you know? When I have guys who say they wanna compete in a lower weight class, I'm like, all right, sweet, we're actually in a proper dieting phase during this weight class. Because another thing, when you're losing weight, you're actually not gonna lose that much strength or you shouldn't lose that much strength because again, it's neurological. Now you will lose some strength, but it's usually actually gonna be because of your levers, you know? So with the bench press, for example, when you're losing weight, you're gonna lose, like, you know, we've got fat around our chest, guys, and females. So when you lose weight, what happens? You lose centimeters around your chest. Now your range of motion increases for the bench press. And so you may lose a little bit of strength because you're using just upper body and you probably lost a little bit of fat mass there. But in saying that, you've actually got more of a range of motion. So that's why using a weight is actually harder. You know, using the same weight or using heavy weights are harder because you've got a bigger range of motion. Even if it's this much different, it's this much different. And like, you know, compared to this to this, anything is gonna make a significant difference in regards to the bench press, just because, you know, with the range of motion, the more you, the, lo the more you have to, the greater the distance you have to move a weight, the harder it's gonna be, you know? And that's why sumo deadlifts, not always, but can usually pull more because you're closer to the ground you know, you've got a shorter lockout overall. I mean, at the end of the day, your legs are gonna be straight, but that's why sumo, you know, the cheating deadlift, gets you able to get a, a usually a heavier weight up faster for a lot of people because you're in that position where you're standing wider, your center of mass is directly under you, your center of mass is closer to the ground, you have more leverage to be able to pick up the weight versus a conventional deadlift. See, like even on the camera, for you guys listening, you can't really see, if you stand in a sumo stance, I look shorter on camera. If I stand in a conventional stance, I am longer, which means longer levers can still move more weight overall, but in that sumo position, you have less range of motion to move. You know, again, same as bench press. People who do a wide grip bench press, you know, huge arch, and they move it like fucking two centimeters to be able to get the bench press. It's still a bench press because they follow the rules, you know? So in saying that, get as close to you can as your, as your weight class way before the event and stick around that weight, you know, within one to two kilos, because it's gonna be quite easy to be able to manage. Then from there, you can just focus on getting stronger, you know? When you're able to maintain your weight, you're with enough, enough, enough amount of calories to be able to maintain the whole time. You're not gonna have, like, you know, when you're in a deficit, again, you won't just get, you won't lose strength, you lose a little bit, but it's more about like, you know, you don't have enough muscle glycogen, you're just in a deficit, so you're hungry, you're thinking about food, you have low energy, you've gotta do other tasks apart from just powerlifting, and all that can be mentally taxing on you. However, you did a cut, let's say six months before the comp. Now you're at the weight you wanna be at. Now you just sit at maintenance and you just train and train and train and you make sure all your sessions are fueled, recovering from all your sessions, focusing on sleep and not having to worry about your diet because you know you're eating consistently the amount of food you need to maintain your weight and you're focusing on getting stronger overall, okay? Also what happens if you lose a little bit of weight, let's say you go into a lower weight class, your deadlift will probably actually improve a little bit, especially if you're a bigger boy, because your stomach just gets in the way when you deadlift. And when you have less of a stomach, you can get into a better position to start. And that's also a benefit too. So there are a lot of benefits to be able to get in a little bit lighter and losing a bit of the gut and being predominantly leaner in a sport like Olympic lifting, oh, sorry, in a sport like powerlifting. And I guess Olympic lifting to a degree, again, if you have quite a big stomach, as you do see the bigger people moving bigger weights, of course, because they do have that leverage, but it's harder for them to get into certain positions, right? So in saying that, to a degree, yes, strength and muscle, sorry, weight and 
muscle mass is going to matter for strength. But overall, if you are someone in a weight class, and it's a, it's a weight bearing sport as powerlifting or Olympic lifting, ideally you'd want to sit as close to that weight as possible. Now again, if you're someone who's a fighter and you're a heavier bloke, again, we'll use MMA for this example, you're a heavier person, you, you know, you get into a water cut, you lose five kilos, you go and weigh in, you're five kilos down, you can eat all that food back up to regain that weight, to restore muscle glycogen. Ideally, it's gonna be 24, 48 hours before the event. You know, because the closer you are, the harder it's going to be. If you're going to weigh in and you're going to fight on that day, you are going to feel like shit if you've just been water cutting. And that's another reason we want to make sure you've got time, okay? So again, if you are going to water cut, give yourself that 24 hours to 48 hours before the competition or whatever it's going to be, 24 or 36, whatever it's going to be, 18, to be able to restore muscle like you should be able to get in, you know, get everything back, get your electrolytes back and everything. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be cramping. You don't want to have potentially... Um, what I say here, it's like you know, strength losses overall, and you don't want to have a food full of stomach after you try to replenish everything because you can still be quite sick if you've got so much food in your stomach. It's going to be hard to be able to fight at a heavier weight if you've just got a belly full of food all the time. Um, you know, especially if you've been pigging yourself out for the last twelve hours to get into uh, be able to fight, fight mode. But you do have the advantage of weight, you know. And again, if you're a heavier bloke, you're most likely going to, be able to take down a lighter bloke, especially if it's a few kilos because you've still got that speed there. So, like you know, the heavier you go, the less speed, the more power you're going to have. To a degree, you can still train your speed. But like a lighter person is going to be speedier, but not as powerful, you know. So it's like you got to kind of find this middle ground. If you were ten kilos heavier, you know, if your weight cut by ten kilos, which is I don't think that would be able to happen. And then you regain 10 kilos, you're probably actually gonna, or actual, actually 10 kilos, you're probably gonna be slower than the other person. So you've got that weight advantage, but you don't have that speed advantage. But at the same time, if it's like five kilos, four kilos, three kilos, you could actually have the weight and the speed advantage to your benefit. So you should be about thinking about, you know, where, what sport you're in, first of all. Is a water cut gonna be suitable for you, or are you better off just doing a traditional deficit, dieting down towards that weight class? You wanna be at and sit around that weight and work at that weight too. I would even say the same thing for a lot of fighters, you probably should still be saying at the same weight, because again, it's just like, it's mentally taxing for when you get heavier, and then you have to cut all the way back down. And sometimes it's okay, because you're like, I want off season, I wanna relax, I wanna enjoy myself a little bit more, which is absolutely fine, but it's like, just think about, even if you're on your off season, you can enjoy yourself a little bit more. If you're still doing, you know, if you're still quite active on just usually, you're gonna be able to make sure that you can maintain that weight class without being too strict in dieting or anything like that. And it's just gonna be overall a beneficial thing for you to be able to perform at your best, okay? So that's a little bit of a talk about the weight cutting. Um, I'm not gonna tell you guys how to water cut because I'm actually not a big expert in it. I don't really like to use it. I haven't really used it with anyone because I don't have any fighters. So. Yeah, that's my two cents. When I do a little bit of research on water cutting, we'll have a chat about it, but that's just what I want to talk about today with the weight cutting.